Hello everyone, we're back with pattern number four, the Greek gift, the Trojan horse, <laughs> one of the most famous classic sacrifices in chess. Now, I do have a tactical sacrifices uh, um, category <laughs> in my uh, in this chess patterns course. And uh, I didn't include this Greek gift one in the sacrifices, even though it is, because it's more of an attacking idea, I feel. This is just my opinion on the categorization. I bet many of you will disagree with me here, but that's just what I'm, uh, what I'm thinking. So, what's the Greek gift? The Greek gift is a sacrifice that tries to uh, just open up the king's side position and try to go for a quick checkmate. If black isn't careful or heavy material losses if black is careful now what do i mean exactly i'll show you in just a second so this is the pattern you need the bishop here on d3 you need the knight on f3 sometimes it could be on h3 what's important is that it goes to g5 and now you'll understand why and you need this queen having access to h5 so it could be on e2 as well or even f3 if the knight is on h3 and what's crucial here is to have the bishop on c1 now, in the second video, after this one actually, we'll take a look at the Greek gift without the bishop on c1. And there is a bit of a key difference there that we shall uh, note in due time. And what's important is that these pawns are as such. None of them have moved, so black has the perfect kingside cover, but it's not so perfect here. And the rook, of course, should be on f8. Usually, uh, before, I used to just include it for... Uh, um, just for completeness sake, usually it's on f8. But here, well, okay, maybe it shouldn't be like in the strictest sense. But uh, yeah, for the king not to be able to escape, usually you'd want it to be on f8. And usually, like in the positions which have the Greek gift, the rook is almost always on f8. So <laughs> yeah, the rook will usually be on f8 or almost always. Okay, so one thing to remember is this key square, g6. How will, uh, what does it mean to uh, the square g6 and why is it so important? Just wait a second and we'll see why. How the pattern plays out. Okay? So in this section you'll understand also why it's so important, this g6 square. So how does the sacrifice play out? First, <laughs> first you sacrifice the bishop. Okay? The king takes. Why are you giving up the bishop? To get the knight in. And if the king retreats, then queen h5, and this is a familiar mating pattern. Queen h7 mate is basically unstoppable. Now, in this case, like for example, the rook can move, but then you take here and yeah, like it depends on the position, but this is almost always mating. If instead, uh, before I, uh, okay, I'll go into this. So the point here is what happens after king g6. So usually, in the Greek gift, when white plays this and the king comes out to g6, usually black doesn't have enough to defend. But you should be aware of situations where black does. So that's why I highlighted the key g6 square. In many cases, black won't have enough to defend. But there are cases where black has enough to defend and run away like this. So you need to be careful. Now after king g6, you usually follow up with queen g4, intending knight e6 and some big nasties or queen d3 check in some cases trying so for example if king h6 queen h7 would be made and if uh, if uh, king f6 sometimes you have knight h7 check sometimes knight e4 sometimes queen d6 it depends but uh, yeah so both moves are playable so when the king comes to g6 and if you see that like after queen g4 your opponent has a brilliant way to stop that or like goes to f6 for example um, after queen g4 they go to f6 and there's nothing and after queen d3 check they go to f6 and for example maybe the rook isn't here the rook is here maybe then um, maybe then uh, black would be able to escape so you need to be careful of that so you need to have an eye on the g6 square now in some other cases the king can't come to h6 now this is why now you know why I included the bishop on c1 in this uh, pattern in the next video, we'll see how with the bishop, when the bishop isn't on c1, the king can actually come to c1 because there are no discovered checks anymore. 
uh, the king can come to h6 because there are no discovered checks anymore. So very important to note. Here usually you follow up with knight e6 discovered check or sometimes knight takes f7, it depends on the position. So this is how the Greek gift plays out. Let's check out some very famous sample games and let's see how Garrick Sparrow destroyed um, yeah, I noticed you can't see the players' names. <laughs> so let me show you the players' names. Alright, so Gary Kasparov playing. Now, the, the engine already, like this is uh, from 1992. So, uh, okay, sorry, just to, yeah. So the, the engine, uh, the engines back then, 1992, weren't so strong. When Deep Blue came in on in 1996, 1997, it was a shocker because they improved so much. Like, look at the way, <laughs> look at the way it's playing the opening and the way it misses this sacrifice. It plays B6. Like, it wants to follow up with Bishop B7, Rook C8, play C5, <laughs> everything so slowly and... White just has a winning sacrifice here. And here you get to see that after King G6, there's Queen G4. Now this big bazunga is threatened. So black tries to parry that, but it's not enough. Um, they sacrifice a knight here just to open up for the bishop. And they also, like, uh, in the engine's mind, well, they did give up the bishop, so... <laughs> I mean, they uh, you did give up the bishop, so uh, they can't give up a knight. But of course, their king is on the run. And here we get to see another one of these tactics with the bishop here. So the engine sacrificed, but yeah, this isn't enough. I'll go through the game quickly. Now it's just an exchange up. Then Gary goes for this end game, where white has a very strong passed pawn and gets two passed pawns and converts this easily winning position. So brilliant game by Gary, but also Fritz was paying. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. Okay, so next game we have here, we get to see a 2300 beating a 2600, amazing result. And we get to see the, wait, what's it called? The Belgrade Gambit, yeah, Belgrade Gambit. Okay, so black plays a good line against this, of course, they're a GM, but now they castle and this just allows bigging. <laughs> okay, so the point of showing you this game was that now, even here, there's knight g5 check, the point being if takes, you check, and you can pick up this guy back, and you have this to mate. So, uh, whoops. So black decides not to take up white with knight takes g5, which should also be losing, but goes king g6. Again, the defensive, the best defensive way in this sacrifice. And now we see h4, very powerful move, protecting the knight and threatening h5. For example, if h5 check, king h6, then knight f7, and we get to see uh, the familiar discover check tactic. So white, black takes here, but now white takes back. And now only like one check is all that's needed, but of course there's a five, but here we'll see why. Sorry guys, we'll see why after f6, queen d3. Now this is why this is so clever, because now f5 cannot be played. So the king had to, oh my god, I'm sorry guys. So the king had to retreat and now white completely destroys black's king's cover with taking on f6 the point being if you take hello and it's gg so just destroying the king cover here the king's cover here now black tries to go for a sacrifice trying to uh, uh, like make white take <laughs> and uh, just not allow them to actually to be honest i have no clue what happens if take I guess the point is to like retreat and make use of the pin because now this can okay okay that's cute but of course like white wouldn't even need to consider that so they just go out of the way and they give up the rook but they win the queen and yeah this is all over quite simple quite simple really 
So here this is uh, a nice sacrifice. Um, wait, was queen? <laughs> okay, I really should have looked at this game more carefully. What was queen g4? Hmm, is this a notation error? <laughs> like, wait, what? What's queen g4? Why, why did he give up the rook like this? I mean, is white even winning now? <laughs> What's going on, guys? Whoa, yeah, I just didn't look at this game maybe as carefully as I should have. <laughs> Okay, yeah, just waiting for the engine. Yeah, what? What? Oh, this is a notation error. Yeah, no way this happened. Okay. Yeah, so this was a notation error. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, very nice game in the Belgrade Gambit, Belgrade Gambit, very quick win. And you get to see the power of this uh, Greek gift sacrifice. So, for the test, let's go through this game by Lugovoy against Kalio. So, in the Nimzo Indian, uh, which is not one of the most aggressive openings, of course. But now White gets the center and sets up for the Greek gift here. So, now they'll push through e5 and hello. Hello, hello. And now white is able to sacrifice, knight g5, king g6. And now the question is, what should white play? Queen g4 or queen d3 check? Or queen c2 check? Or h4? Up to you to figure out. So this is the test. And I'll give you... Um, um, yeah, I'll, I'll give you time to pause the video and figure out the response. Alright guys, so the answer is here. So, knight g5 check, king g6, and now queen c2 check. It's the best move. Queen d3 check also works, but I don't like putting the queen on this uh, file. Just uh, it, it might be a ta tactical liability and it's not protected here. It's not protected here as well, but there's no queen eyeing it. Now why does queen g4 not work? Well the answer lies in the game continuation after f5 which is what occurred in the game and uh, let's say you take here then the knight takes and if you go queen g3 there's knight h5 and you don't have any good squares to go to. So if you go to g4 then hello this is going to be very nasty for white. Um, so yeah, this is basically losing here. The king is actually rather safe. There are no real threats. So that's why queen c2 check was played. And then let's take a look at how the game finished. So white was able to just win the bishop back. And continued on with the attack. And then got a very, very nice mate in. This is a very cute Epaulette mate. All right, so that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning about the Greek gift sacrifice, very important sacrifice, remember that when the bishop is on d3 and uh, the knight, okay just let me show you, so remember when the bishop is on d3, the knight here, the queen here and of course this bishop, um, you can sacrifice on h7 and get a very nice game depending on the circumstances and you have to calculate of course, but it's a nice pattern to bear in mind. Okay, so with that, take care guys and au revoir.